Welcome to Soundbridge Music's Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know front range artists who not only shaped the local music scene, but who joined with Soundbridge Music in its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring communities together. We're so happy to be here today with Cheyenne Dane, the Soundbridge Music Featured Artist for February 2019. Cheyenne is a creative force based in Loveland, Colorado. She's dedicated to the exploration of the 6x6 cross-strung harp and of creative expression through music. She's so kind to sit down with us today and answer some of our questions. Well, thank you so much, Cheyenne, for walking us here <laughs> into your studio. Thanks for wanting to come. <laughs> it's so good to be here. I'm super blessed to have you. Well, it's good to be here. So yeah, tell us a little bit about how you started learning the harp. Okay, so that's a funny story. I was 17 years old and I kind of ended up in this cult, religious organization, mm -hmm. and they noticed that I was musically inclined, so they were handing me different instruments. Here, what can you do with this? And I, you know, play it and it was like, okay, but then they put a harp in front of me and that was just the thing I just wanted to do. So I became obsessed with harps ever since I was 17. Now a regular harp has one row of strings and uh, it is diatonic in nature so it's like being limited mm. to the white keys on the piano with no black keys um, mm. so you can put levers on it that will raise each string by a half tone and sort of work in chromaticism but mm. the music that i wanted to play and that i really felt coursing through my veins was absolutely 12 tone chromatic music so yeah. my search for a chromatic harp um, led me to the 6-6 six, six cross string harp and it's got all the notes on, on, the, on the piano within the octave, mm -hmm. but it's arranged slightly different in that if it were keys on the piano, there would be six white keys and six black keys per octave alternating, white, black, white, black. And what that does for you is it makes all your shapes and patterns consistent. So all of your major mm -hmm. chord shapes are exactly the same. Wherever your tonic is, it's the same shape. Wow. All your minor chord shapes are the same shape. So for playing intuitively and improvising, mm -hmm. it's just phenomenal. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Man, and you do a lot of, in this community, it seems like you play, there are a lot of singer songwriters that you'll, you'll join on stage. Yeah, I've enjoyed um, working with David Coyle. He's yeah. such a great friend. He's just a great, um, got a great spirit, and he's always pushing me to, do more for myself and <laughs> yeah. I kind of hide behind other musicians sometimes but I need to just be. <laughs> need to just, yeah. And just be because I write music too but I worked with David Coyle. We played with, I played with Squeaky Wheel and the Water Bear. Yeah. Yeah, that was so yeah. much fun. We did mm -hmm. that um, art walk show where we had the main street closed down and we played mm -hmm. with um, Jackson, Cloud and it was so fun. Nice. What's it like yeah. going in like starting to, to arrange harp parts with a singer-songwriter? Because I'm guessing most singer-songwriters have never played with a harp before. Um, how do you kind of find your space there? So with guitars, um, I mean, I, I've got the ear thing going on, but mm -hmm. also, like, I can, I have played guitar and I know what their chord shapes look like, so that helps me to clue on, in on where they're at. Mm -hmm. And rhythmically, I've done a lot of experimenting with different rhythms and stuff, so I can on a harp, you don't usually see someone go into some kind of a blues riff or something, yeah. but that's kind of what I've worked on as a musician because that's what I wanted to do with the harp. So it's, I just, I just get a feel for the music and I just kind of let it come out of my fingers and I know what chords I'm playing and how to, and it just kind of comes, develops from there. That's great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your music, the music you write. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> what what inspires what inspires you to write and create music? So actually, though I had only written one song up until my um, midlife contemplation. <laughs> that kind of midlife right? contemplation. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was a song that I had written in the religious community that I was a part of. Um, and it was a really wonderful song. I wrote it for my daughter's bat mitzvah, and she never mm -hmm. had her bat mitzvah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But um, but once I started coming into this time in my life where I was really contemplating everything that I had been through, it was a real, um, the word galvanizing, I'm not sure if that's the right word, um, time. Mm -hmm. I started writing and really being able to explore 
my subconscious and what was going on and everything all the way down to my childhood. I have a very traumatic childhood. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in learning songs and writing songs, and I just got to know myself really well and started to be able to navigate even more what kind of a life I want to create for myself and yeah. So what's it like going from um, using your music as something to like heal yourself and, and learn more about yourself to, uh, to sharing it with others? How do you like that process? Yeah so at first I mean I've obviously I haven't performed out very much with my own music because I've been a little bit shy about it so when I performed out I've played mostly other people's music um, yeah. but I'm coming into a time where I feel like I just really want to share it and I'm finding more people mm -hmm. resonating with what my experience has been and um, so yeah there's a little bit of that shyness but I think it's part of the healing process and it's just it just feels good to just be able to you know, turn something that was so tumultuous into this, mm -hmm. like, beautiful, it's like art, sonic art, and it feels good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, should we shift to, uh, let's talk about this wonderful space we're in. This is your studio here in Loveland, Colorado. I'm so blessed. Yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, and there's microphones hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. There's so much amazing stuff surrounding us. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> uh, how you built this space and what you do here. So... My um, friend around the corner who owns Eclectic House Artisan Market, Linda, mm -hmm. she um, came into being in the position of subletting this space and she has had me play in her shop um, ambience music and do that too, um, mm -hmm. you know, just for events and such. And um, she offered to me, hey, would you like to have a studio? You can teach music and do whatever. And I was like, so awesome. I, so like I've had this vision for a while of doing all of these things in a space, but it just kind of dropped to my lap, the availability of it. Um, and then the second part of the question yeah. was, what do I do in it? Yes. Yes. So I have been um, hosting a third Friday um, kind of newer artist showcase at Local Artisan, mm -hmm. and I recorded it. And then I would take the recording home and, you know, edit it and try to make it, you know, really sound pristine and then mm -hmm. um, pair it with some of the photos that I had taken from the night and turn it into a YouTube upload and a SoundCloud upload. And we've mm -hmm. been doing that for about six months. But um, so I'm still, I'm on the tail end of my, my um, commitment, I guess, of passing the torch on now to Jacob Cheatham. Uh -huh. um, but... So I edit music, but I'm also like, I can record other people's events and edit. I can, I thought of people want to do an oral family history. I can mm. record that. So that's, you know, the kind of what I can do with the recording equipment I have. Um, but also the main chunk, what I'm working on right now developing is um, these harp healing aid sessions. So if you want to come in and relax or you want to work on um, you know, something internally or um, go on a meditative journey or just just have an experience of having somebody compose a piece of music just for you, you can come and lay down in my Chase Lounge mm -hmm. and we can talk about what you want to get out of the session and you can set your intention or whatever it is, whatever your uh, faith basis is. Mm -hmm. And then I turn on the record button and I use... I have either an ocean drum. I have a larger one too, but it's very loud. Mm. Or I have the rain stick. We start off with about five minutes of that, and it's mm. just a nice way to um, let let all your you know passing thoughts go and to just be able to clear in. And then I move into a harp improvisation. So after having spoken with you, I kind of I feel like I get a sense of who you are and where you're at and I feel like I can intuitively um, compose a piece right there on the spot and that lasts about 10 minutes and then I end with um, those bells there mm -hmm. and they're binaural tone generators so there's two of them and they're just a couple of hertz apart and they create that super low frequency third tone that you know when you're tuning a guitar with the um, harmonics and you're trying to wait until you don't hear it. so that yeah. that that frequency in the middle that's the binaural frequency and that mm -hmm. kind of brings us back from you know the harp journey 
um, and brings us back into reality. So it's a nice grounding way to end it. So, uh, and what else, what else are you doing in this okay. space? So I'm available to teach harp lessons. I can teach regular harp, although my passion is the 6-6 cross string harp, mm -hmm. and I can help anybody um, who's interested in finding a harp that's affordable for them and maybe even purchasing a harp for them to rent on a monthly mm -hmm. basis to try out. Um, I'm going to be doing workshops, songwriting for personal growth and exploration. That's to mm -hmm. come. And I love to share um, beginning audio skills with, you know, just homeschoolers. I'm mostly available during the days because I have children. I have a lot of children, so <laughs> I want to be available for them at night. But if there are homeschoolers and students want to come in and um, make their own you know, multi-track recording or something like yeah. that. We could do things like that, too. And uh, what do you have uh, going on these days? Are there any events that you've got coming up? <laughs> so, so far, um, all I've scheduled for February um, is a small appearance with Sean Benite at um, Avogadro's Number in Fort Collins. I believe it's February 23rd. It's um, a program called Tail Spinner Lounge. Mm -hmm. So it's a variety show. There's stories and live painting and people mm -hmm. playing songs. And the theme is um, burning love. Mm -hmm. What happens after Valentine's Day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll be playing a couple of songs for that. Yeah, but. Um, cool. And are there any good places for people to keep up with, with what you're doing? Yeah. Um, in general, my Facebook page, uh, Cheyenne Dane. Mm -hmm. um, I have an artist and a personal, but I'll accept you on either one. Mm -hmm. And then the Center for Musical Exploration. Um, I'm going to drop the first part, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, and shorten it just to Center for Musical Exploration. But right now it's still got, mm -hmm. we're jamming on it, so that's how you find me on Facebook. <laughs> nice. Right. So uh, let's shift a little bit to, to the community. Um, what inspired you to become part <laughs> of Sandbridge Music? <laughs> um, well... I noticed the, what is that thing? Songwriting when lions that happens in the summer? Yeah, song school. I yeah. noticed the song school scholarship and mm -hmm. I'd kind of, through um, being friends with David Coyle and Sean Benite and other members of the kind of left-hand artist community, mm -hmm. um, seen the name Soundbridge and I didn't really know much about what it was all about until um, Trish actually reached out to me one time and said that they needed a musician for to play in Boulder for somebody's small event happening. Mm -hmm. And so I called Sean, hey, let's go play this thing. And we played and it was a lot of fun. And then uh, that got me a little curious, so I started looking more into it. I actually um, had applied for that scholarship last summer. Um, mm -hmm. I think Sarah Eschner won it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. Um, so just the mission statement of um, bringing music to um, underprivileged individuals and um, making mus musicianship more of a career path, a viable career path, I believe is, mm -hmm. you know, what Soundbridge is all about. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So that really deeply resonates with me. Mm -hmm. So I obviously would want to be connected with that, of course. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I love community, just in general. I love connecting with people and working together with others and promoting others. And I think the more we promote each other, the more we're actually promoting a better world for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and welcoming yeah. us into your beautiful studio and, yeah. and sharing your experience with us. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's our pleasure. <laughs> If you haven't had the chance to see Cheyenne perform, you can catch her on February 20th at Loco Artisan Coffee Shop in Loveland with David Coyle. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check back next month for our featured artist of the month, John Bunsley. If you're interested in learning more about Soundbridge Music and becoming a part of Music for Change, check us out at soundbridgemusic.org.